Welcome to Veteran Resource Podcast, where you will meet nonprofit organizations focused on improving the lives of veterans and their family members. Here is your host, Jeremy Paris. Welcome, everybody, to episode 22 of the Veteran Resource Podcast. I'm your host, Jeremy Paris, and today's guest is Clint Honeycutt of Mentors for Soldiers. And before we get into that, I wanted to read off a couple of the reviews that have come in. And we have surpassed 100 reviews. That's a pretty big deal, and I'm so excited. And I want to thank everybody out there for giving those reviews. So we're going to start out the reviews today with Polly 12 b who writes, Great resource. Anything dedicated to helping veterans is okay in my book. And then Nikki L. writes, Excellent resource. This podcast is so needed. I'm looking forward to sharing it with all of my veteran family and friends. Thank you. And Kent Trabbing says, Practical resource, candid stories. Jeremy is compassionate and helpful. Thinking of listeners' needs. Intricate details about guests' history and current offerings. Practical resource. Thank you so much for all of these reviews. And if you have not left a review yet, I invite you to go over to veteranpodcast.com slash iTunes. That's going to redirect you right to iTunes where you could listen to other episodes or you can also leave a rating and a review for me and I'll be reading it on a future episode. All right, let's start talking about Clint Honeycutt with Mentors for Soldiers. This organization was created in order to match successful veterans in the civilian community with soldiers. This partnership will provide a resource to those soldiers currently exiting the military. A soldier re-entering the civilian community comes with some challenges. These challenges are mostly in understanding what technical and non-technical career opportunities exist and just where to begin. With the advice of successfully transitioned veterans, they will gain a resource which should increase their odds of successful transition. This was a really, really great interview. I enjoyed it so much. And there's actually a point in here where you can probably hear it and you'll probably pick up on it, but there's a point during the interview where it actually dawns on me that every single person in the military that is getting out could really benefit from this. I mean, every single person getting out of the military could really use a mentor, somebody who has been there before, somebody that can help answer questions that they have or guide them in the right direction. So I really want you to pay attention to this episode. And in the show notes, which I will tell you about after this podcast, you'll be able to get more information on how to connect with Clint and also how to get plugged in as either a mentor or a mentee with Mentors for Soldiers. Let's jump right into the interview. Clint, welcome to the Veteran Resource Podcast. How are you doing today? Doing great, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. I like to start off by kind of getting the elevator pitch, if you will, or just kind of a quick background of what Mentors for Soldiers is. Mentors is the organization that's set up to be able to help transitioning veterans from the military to the civilian world. In short, it's kind of the e-harmony of mentor mentor e relationships. The the relationship between a veteran that has uh, already successfully made the transition and connecting them with people that are getting out of the military that will be transition or, or that is transitioning. Excellent, excellent. And we're going to dig in a lot more on that. But before we do that, I wanted to get a little bit of background on you. So, uh, Clint, where are you from? Originally from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. That's where I grew up. Okay. I could I could hear the accent still. You haven't gotten rid of all of that. Yeah, come on and go. <laughs> Did you have any military ties growing up? Parents in the military or siblings or anything like that? Actually, no. Nobody on uh, either side of my uh, my family was in the military. And how I got hooked up was, uh, or how, the, the reason why I went in, it's kind of funny. It's basically uh, two guys riding around drinking beer, talking about what we're going to do after high school. So that was uh, that was kind of the, the start of the conversation. And by the end of the night, many beers later, I thought it was a great idea. So, <laughs> so that's what I did. Interesting. Did your buddy go in too? Yeah, actually, we went in together. Uh, and, uh, you know, funny you ask about that because him and I were friends since we were five and uh, we grew up together. and. He is uh, is getting out in two months. I've been uh, I've been mentoring him now for about uh, about nine months. 
So uh, I think uh, already it's a extreme success from a, a mentor mentor relationship. Not just not to mention just a great friendship. So he gets out in uh, in roughly two months. He starts his terminal leave. That's excellent. And so when you went in, you went in to uh, which service? I was in the Navy. Him, him and I both joined the Navy at the same time. Okay, you were in the Navy. But you didn't stay in the Navy the entire time, correct? Well, I did uh, four years in the Navy. And then I also did, uh, I did four years in the, Army Nas- in the Louisiana Army National Guard. Nice, nice. Which did you like better? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a big difference. Uh, in, the, in the Navy, uh, I was on a ship for about three and a half years. Uh, then I went to BUDS training there at the end. Uh, I ended up uh, dropping out of BUDS and, and getting out. So I went from that to uh, the Army uh, National Guard in a reserve unit. So it, it was a big change. And it, it, it wasn't one that was really easy to get used to. Sitting around doing nothing wasn't uh, necessarily uh, my style at that time. Yeah, yeah I can imagine. I've uh, come to appreciate it now, but I didn't. <laughs> So I was, I was in the army, you know, I can't really complain about my time in the army, but, uh, I've, I've said more than a few times that if I, if I knew then what I know now, I probably would have joined the Navy because the army, you end up in all of these holes, you know, where there's nothing around you except like bail bonds and liquor stores and and strip clubs and things like that. And the Navy you end up pulling into the same ports that the cruise ships pull into. I'm like, wait a second, they've they might they're onto something here. Yeah, there's no doubt. The contrast between the two: sleeping in the woods under the stars, sleeping in a bed with three hot meals. You know, when you when you start comparing some of those things, it's uh, those are the things that you come to appreciate for sure. Uh, <laughs> not the uh, the resort like ports that that we hit now. On the other side of that, it's they're four and few between. So you pick your medicine one way or the other. Right, right, right. They don't have it all good. <laughs> no, it's definitely you know, as you know, you know, it, you have the uh, the great things about it, and you have the things that absolutely suck. Uh, so you know, I guess uh, one of the things that we learned is, uh, or that we all learn, is that sometimes you got to wait way through crap to get to where you want to get. So uh, <laughs> or get to the good stuff. I guess would be the best way to say it. Yeah, and I think that's true for every service. Yeah, that's what I would think too. <laughs> and so, uh, when you were transitioning out of the military, what was what was that like for you? Was it a easy experience? Was it were you all set up already, or was it a struggle? Well, the funny thing is, I'd, I'd like to think that I was. I think I'm like most. You know, you get out and you have all these big expectations and all these worldly plans, and you know, you're going to set the world on fire. Uh, then you get out and realize that you're just another fish in the sea. That that you better find your way pretty quick, or else you're gonna you're gonna get eaten. So my transition was actually pretty good. It, it was by no real planning. Uh, you know, it was it was through nothing necessarily that I did. Uh, it was really uh, I got lucky, and people that were around me helped guide me in the right direction. And I, I'll call them mentors, but. Um, you know, it's just people, people helping people is what it, uh, what it boils down to. Um, quite honestly, you know, getting out, I, I knew I wanted to go to college and I knew I needed a job. So, you know, I, I'm probably like most people that get out of the military where police, firemen, other service related jobs are just where we think our talents kind of bring us. And um, I had people kind of, kind of help me out and show me that they're there are other opportunities out there besides just that. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but you know, when you're when when, when in your mind it's limited to just that, it makes it uh, you know it makes it difficult to see anything else without somebody showing you something. Right, right, and I hear that so many times from so many different people that they get out and it's like, well, you know, like I I drove a tank. What could I possibly do? I can't drive a tank in the civilian world, so maybe I'll do heavy equipment or corrections officer or cop or something like that. And, you know, like you said, there's, there's nothing wrong with, with those jobs, but they don't understand the skills that the military has taught you. I mean, that person that was driving a tank was also, you know, a platoon leader. They had uh, many people under them. They, they had all of these leadership skills. They had gone to a couple different leadership schools. They, they were in charge of multi-million dollar budgets. And so acquisitions was a piece of cake for them. And there, there's all of these, these skills that 
it just blows right over their head that that they even have them. So fun, that's well, interesting you mention that. It's funny you say that because uh, especially you know, driving tanks. My my job in the Navy was actually driving aircraft carrier. So uh, hmm. and and so you go okay. Well, well, what do you do when you get out? I don't I don't I don't know of any aircraft carriers that need driving. You know, as far as, <laughs> you know I was in navigation. You know, there there are some there, there are some jobs there, but but a lot of those are really uh, really tough to to kind of break into when you talk about like barge captains and and. Um, and harbor pilots, things like that, which which kind of fits well, but at the same time is that uh, if you don't have certain backgrounds and certain uh, connections, that is that is a unrealistic career path without some of the right pieces put in place for you. So even that, even even the things you think that actually fit perfect don't. I mean, you you still have to have somebody kind of take you by the hand and kind of show you some of the things you need to do to be able to get in there to to do it. Uh, and it's all about networking. You know, it's uh, networking is probably the most important thing when you get out. Luckily, I was able to I had a, another good friend of mine that was just getting out of the Army when I got out of the Navy and we went to school together. So we both joined the Army National Guard so that we, we used our GI Bill and we used um, the Army National Guard to help pay for college. So between those two, you know, we were making twelve or fourteen hundred dollars a month without ever setting foot in a workplace. And our college was paid for. Wow! So we had, we had that going for us. However, the uh, career path that I was going down was criminal justice, and and uh, the things that I've done since uh, I got out of school. And well, that was my bachelor's. Uh, my master's is in my actual career field, but you know, my, my bachelor's really I could have spent that time, you know, trying to figure out really what I wanted to do. Uh, and it would have probably benefited me a lot more than uh, the path that I went down just not knowing. Right, um, right. So that kind of leads kind of kind of nicely into what I'm, what we're going to get into now, and that's your organization, Mentors for Soldiers. Uh, what was the the mindset that kind of started that ball rolling? Well, it was actually uh, I, I've already talked a little bit about my friend and I that uh, we we were as we were drinking. Uh, he talked me into the Navy being a good idea. <laughs> uh, he, he, he'd always knew that what he was going to do. So uh, he actually was getting out and he's been talking about getting out for the last five years or so. And um, what I saw in our, our conversations that we had about him getting out really bothered me. I took it personal because he's been in now for a little over 20 years, 24, 23 or 24 years. And we've been talking about him getting out for the last at least four or five years, just on or off. I, I really thought it was a shame that somebody puts and dedicates that much time to uh, to our country and is scared to get out in the country that they protected. Uh, I, I just thought that that was that was awful, uh, in my opinion. Um, I think the military is a great job of bringing people in. The, the thought of how they bring all these people from all these different walks of life and and bring them in a, in a all these young kids in the you know into the military and get them to do these amazing things but yet they can't help them after after they've been in to successfully you know be able to to go into the uh, to back in the in, in the civilian world and when you think about you know, they go to school, uh, high school, they're in their parents' house, they're living by rules, they get out, they go to the military, they're living by rules, um, you know, it, and every, you know, that's, that's the world that they know. And uh, after 40 years of that, uh, my buddy is a good example, after 40 years of that, you just want to get out and be able to provide for your family and not have to take a step backwards where you have to worry about bills and you have to worry about, you know, your family changing their way of life. And, uh, I just, I really thought it was a shame that we don't do more for people that are getting out and that not just the people that are, you know, have PTSD or have some type of disability, but the regular person getting out, even after four years or after 24 years, uh, there should, you know, and, and I know that we, we, there's, there's programs out there that tries to, to do some of those things, but, but it really, it, every soldier, every person you talk to that, that comes out can tell you that it, it's just not quite what you need right. uh, to get in the right place. 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, I spent, I spent 10 years in the army when I was coming out. Um, they taught me, you know, here's how you write a resume and here's, you know, here's how to tie a tie, which I knew for many, many years already. (laughs) It's like going through these classes where it's almost like, you know, you feel like they should be teaching this stuff to a sixth grader and they're teaching it to me. And it's, it's like, well, none of this stuff is really going to help me. I need the next level or the next five levels above that. Who, who's going to help me with that? And by that time you're already out. That's right. And, and again, you kind of think you, you think you're ready. And when you're thrown in the middle and every, your world has just changed because before if you screwed up, you knew you were going to get toothpaste and you knew you were going to get a toothbrush and you knew you were going to get a hot meal. Well, when you get out and you screw up, you know, it's all over. You know, it's, it's, it's too late to try to go about figuring it out. It's, uh, you know, you're in the middle of it. So uh, it's sink or swim at that point. And the stress and anxiety and, and all that that goes with it is just, uh, you know, something that our, our military people getting out shouldn't have to feel and, ha- and shouldn't be afraid of. And so this organization that, that you uh, started, the Mentors for Soldiers, that was your way of, of kind of filling that gap then? Yeah, it was actually something that I had in my mind for probably about five years or so. Really, the first time that I started talking to my buddy about, about him getting out kind of made me want to, you know, there's got to there's gotta be a way to help. And, uh, and it got me thinking. So over about three or four years, I'm just thinking, well, you know, it, it always kind of come up. but never would necessarily come to fruition. And um, I, I guess about a year ago, I had a, I was sitting at a table at an event. Um, I'm a HSE manager for a, a, a major oil company. And, and we, were, we were sitting at this uh, function and one of the ladies at the table uh, got to talking to my wife and she found out that we met while I was in the military and, and kind of that conversation went around and she found out that I was in the Navy well, about that time, her brother was getting out of the Navy and he wanted to go in the health and safety field. So, uh, so she said, Hey, you know, I've got a brother and she was telling me his story and, and, uh, and he'd really like to talk to you probably. And I know what she was thinking that, man, you know, you could probably get him a job or you could probably at least send him in a, in a direction. And she asked me if I would talk to him. So I said, yeah. And over the next couple of weeks, you know, she sent me emails and, and finally we hooked up. But before we did, I had thought about, well, I'm, I'm going to make an effort not to just call somebody and get this guy a job, but to to help guide him through resume, through interviews, through uh, the right training that he needed to get, you know, those type of things uh, and document the process of, of, of kind of all the things that we talk about and how he searches for jobs, what he does without just doing it for him. So that's what I did over a six month period. Um, we, we talked a couple times a month. So it was very, from my standpoint, it was very little effort. I would talk to him and every conversation we had was just, it, it, it made me feel great because, and quite honestly, I didn't realize that I was even in a, in a good position where somebody didn't want to talk to me. And he was, you know, he was very appreciative um, every time we talked, you could, you could tell light bulbs were coming on. It was, Oh, I, I didn't think about doing that. or I didn't think about calling that person or doing this. And, uh, long story short, you know, six months later, he had a, a job in the field that he wanted. Um, it, it wasn't necessarily the, you know, the place where he wants to end, but it was a, it's a very good start to a, a good career and where he was in his military career it was an equal shift over, uh, if not a, if not ahead, um, of where he started. Um, so I nice. documented the process and put that together in a, in a, uh, in a format where I could share it with other mentors so they could use very similar techniques to get to the same place. Very nice. Very nice. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I just wanted to clear the air here and kind of get this out in the open. You're, name is mentors for soldiers but this is available to any branch of the services right that is right uh, and it's every every interview i do every uh <laughs> not every person i talk to but damn near it uh <laughs> ask, the, ask the same questions this just for for army um as i mentioned before i'm 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 prior navy and uh and as army as well so uh 
<laughs> Soldier was just a, a term of endearment for somebody in the military. Um, but I know it does offend people. And the uh, only thing I can say is I wish I started under another name, but, uh, but this is the way it works. Excellent. I, I just wanted people to know that they weren't excluded here and you know, they could, they can uh, come to you for help as well. Clint, I, I kind of wanted to get a walkthrough for somebody that uh, was listening to this podcast and, and they're saying, you know, I'm getting out of the military. This sounds like something that would really help me out because I don't really know where, you know, the direction that I'm going to go. I could use some help. Can you kind of do a walkthrough of what it would be like, you know, from initial contact that like they contact you? What happens next for them? So for a soldier, they would go onto our website at um, mentorsforsoldiers.com. And it's mentors, the number four, but then soldiers.com. In the, in the, the tabs, it says uh, soldiers. And you click that tab and it says, I, I want a mentor. Uh, you click that, you enter, or there's about three or four blocks of information, not much. And then what happens is we've been lucky enough to, uh, to start this whole thing with great volunteers and people helping us out. One of the companies that helped us out is a company called Uvize, U-V-I-Z-E. And uh, they have a platform. It's, it, was a, uh, it was a company started by five veterans, and they've created a platform that allows people to connect on their platform. They use it. They, they've proven the concept in, uh, in uh, colleges where they have veterans that have, uh, are, are in college and it allows veterans to mentor other veterans while they're in college. So the juniors and seniors mentoring freshmen and sophomores. Hmm. So that's what they have. Uh, that's the platform that they have. And they've donated that to us to allow us to use a version of that. And then it's a Mentors for Soldiers version of that. So what you do is uh, when you sign up, you automatically get sent an invite to the platform. Uh, the UVIS platform. When you go into the platform, you're asked to set up a profile just like you would in LinkedIn or Facebook or, or anything like that. Um, it's just a lot less information. So you enter your information, um, and then you're on the platform. Uh, in the platform, you can do several things. Uh, I'll just mention a couple. You can go in and ask questions, and all the mentors and all the soldiers can see all the questions, uh, can see your question and be able to answer the question that you have uh, through a kind of like a blog type of, uh, of setup. In addition to that, there's a resource tab where there's we, we try to put as many resources as we can in one place so you don't have to go looking for things, but you can find it there. Uh, we have videos that talk about the platform. We have videos and uh, presentations that talk about mentoring. We also have a transition map and action plan to be able to help somebody who's transitioning. So all those resources are on the, uh, uh, on the platform. Now, the main thing about the platform, so as a soldier, when you sign up in there, set up your profile, you, you get to looking around the platform. One of the first things we ask you to do is actually go in and you can search the mentors. So everybody that signed up for a mentor has also created a profile. So you can go in and say, when you create a profile, you actually have the interest or the things that you're good at, uh, you put them as a tag uh, in your profile. So like mine, for example, my tag might be Navy. It might be GI Bill. It might be health, safety, and environmental because that's what I do. I'm in the oil and gas business. Um, so all those things will be in my profile. So when that soldier goes in and says, okay, I want to go look for a mentor, they do a search under whatever they're interested in. So let's say that they're from the Army and they, they're looking to be a uh, paramedic. Well, if that's what they're looking for, then they do a search and it, it pulls up anybody that has any tags associated with what they're looking for. And then they're able to, to look at that mentor's background, read their profile, and then decide if that's who they want to be their mentor. If it is, then all they have to do is click on them, uh, request them as a mentor. Uh, and then they get it. And then the conversation starts at that point. Oh, great. Great. And so you kind of went over both sides there. Um, there's from the mentor's standpoint, they would go in kind of the same way to the, to the website and they would put in their own profile. At that point, they're just kind of waiting for somebody to select them. 
So good point. Uh, so it's a little different from the, from the soldier aspect to the mentor aspect. The soldier is really driving, is, is in the driver's seat in the program to decide what they want to do. So they can go ask questions or they can uh, select mentors. The mentors, however, when they go in, they, they actually go into the platform the same way. However, they're signed up as a mentor. And uh, there's uh, a video that talks about the platform itself on how to use it and the features associated with it. That video is set up for the soldiers and the mentors. So they watch the same video. Now, if I'm a mentor, then from the video, I go into the mentor section and actually there's a video, a video that walks through the expectations as a mentor and talks about here's, the, here's what we would like you to do on the platform. We'd like you to answer questions. We'd like you to stay engaged with... Uh, with the people on the platform, um, we'd like you to uh, to spread the word to other soldiers about the about the program, so we get more people in. Mm. Uh, and we also ask them to uh, uh, to learn the transition map and action plan and the video. And we have slides that that as well that go along with the video, so you can you can do it separate if uh, if you want. But what it does is it walks you through the first conversation, the second conversation, and the third conversation. And by the end of the third conversation, there's you would have went over the transition map and action plan, and that transition map and action plan actually drives the forward conversations. Excellent. Excellent. So is there special training involved with, uh, with the mentors themselves? Not necessarily. Um, I'll be honest. When I first started this, I said, I, I just said the hell with it. I've got to start somewhere. And uh, so <laughs> where I started was... I figured that worst case scenario, two people connect and they don't hit it off at all. They just, uh, you know, total opposites, just n- nothing kind of clicks between them. Even if that happens, in my mind, I was thinking that, you know, if if somebody's getting out and doesn't know where to start and, and doesn't, you know, at the end of the day, it really doesn't doesn't know anything about what they want. If they have a con- just a, a converse a five minute conversation with somebody that's already done it, you should be able to pick up something right. that will make it a little easier. I mean, think of, think back to your own transition out. Just imagine if somebody would have told you, you know, some of the things that you know now, uh, you know, in in those first couple conversations about getting out of the effort that you put in and all the wrong turns you made, if they would have just kind of steered you in a direction, even it's funny, even the smallest of comments really hits home and can drive you in a way that, that makes you successful instantly. Or if you don't have it, will make you go through years of agony. Yeah, absolutely. I, I was in that actual situation where I had a mentor coming out because one of my buddies, Tyson, he got out like three months before me and he was my roommate. He was getting out and uh, we were both going into the computer field and he had more experience than I did, but he went and he landed a job for a government contractor. So they, they had him kind of sitting on the bench for a couple months. And uh, so when it came time for me to start, you know, fishing my resume out there, he said, Hey, I could tell you because they have me sitting here working on job openings for them, trying to figure out placements for them. He, I could tell you right now, here are the job openings that we have. Do you fit any of them? And I was able to walk right into one of those positions. Now, had it not been for him, I'm not even sure that I, that I would have gone in the direction of computers. Um, and if I did go in computers, I definitely wouldn't have even heard of the uh, company that I ended up working for. Um, I would have been trying to go for the bigger, you know, like I'll try to work for Microsoft or, you know, yeah, Google. I don't think they were around then, but yeah, I I would have been going for the really hard ones to get into and I probably wouldn't have gotten the job. So that saved me, like you said, many, many months of of torture instead of before I even was transitioned out, I already had a job lined up. Yeah. And, that, and you know, just the, those little conversations like that, I can think of hundreds that, uh, that I've been lucky enough where people cared. It, it, and sometimes it's not even they, they care. They just, you know, just had, it, just took a couple minutes with you and just had a conversation. So 
I, quite honestly, I was looking for more of quantity over quality. Yeah. It's, it's really where I started. I mean, it's, and that sounds kind of funky, uh, you know, because you, you would think quality would always be over, over quantity. <laughs> um, but, uh, but that's really the approach that I took um, was, you know, hey, worst case scenario, two people have a conversation, they spend 15 minutes, they walk away, not real impressed with each other, but, uh, but they share information. And uh, if that happens, uh, I was thinking, hey, success. So that's, that, that's, that's where I started with that. And so uh, how long is, do, do these relationships, these mentor relationships usually last? Is it just until you know, they get into the job that they wanted or do these, is this an ongoing thing? You know, I, I would say, um, now we've only, uh, I've only started, uh, I started Mentors for Soldiers in January. Okay. Uh, so we haven't been, uh, been, been out that long to say that it lasts, that, that mentor relationships last forever. Um, however, what I would say is that, uh, you know, since I've gotten out, I've, I've gotten mentors that I've had since day one and I will always have. Um, and there's, there's probably a handful of people like that. Um, you know, ultimately, I, I would say it, it, it would be absolutely wonderful if somebody made a lifelong friend. Or, or a connection uh, that they could call and bounce stuff off of. But whether it's 20, you know, 20, 40 year relationship or whether it's a, a five minute call that ends with that person wasn't that great and I don't want to talk to them anymore. Uh, <laughs> I, I think, uh, you know, I think success. I think, you know, when you look at mentors or volunteering, there are people that already made the transition. They're wanting to help somebody. And if you have people that want to help somebody, and you have people on the other side that are getting out that really are seeking help and are, are wanting to, to do whatever it takes to be successful. If you put those two people together, uh, whether it's five minutes or whether it's 20 years, it, it, it will be a successful relationship. And do you, uh, do you also work with other nonprofit organizations? Yeah, we sure do. Um, the transition map and um, an action plan that we have was donated from a company called Purple Star. Okay. Uh, they have a peer, peer mentoring organization that uh, that is great. Uh, the gentleman who started that is named John Henry. He's uh, he he's been great. Um, there's there's been several others that uh, that that I've been working with. Uh, Warrior Warrior Benefit, um, uh, Green Beret Foundation. Oh wow! Um, you know. When you look at all the mentor, there's there's mentoring organizations that each of them kind of have a little twist on them uh, or, or twists to them, mm -hmm. where maybe they like uh, Green Beret Foundation, you know, are toward Green Berets. There's a there's a a SEAL uh, a Navy SEAL mentoring program that does step warfare. People that come out of that, you know, there's 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 a lot of different groups like that. What I say uh, from a from a mentors for soldiers standpoint is that. Networking is the most important thing you can do. Sign up for them all. If you can, if if you can uh, apply and get accepted, then and, and it fits you, then by all means, don't let mentors for soldiers be the the place you stop. You know, the the more that you can network, the more successful you're going to be. And at the end of the day, um, I'm not looking to to make a name. I'm not looking for mentors for soldiers to be the biggest thing ever. Uh, I'm looking to help as many people as I can. Uh, the best way that I can. And, uh, and, and that's it. That's, that's some great advice there. And, uh, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts being a podcaster. Uh, it's, it's one of my hobbies. I, I try to hear what other people are doing and I and catch some great nuggets. One of the ones that I've been listening to a lot lately is called the mentee podcast. And, uh, if I remember it's a Jeff Woods, um, who's a great guy, but he has the concept that um, uh, there, there's that saying that you are equivalent to the five people that you spend the most time with. And so he's, he has this, uh, this idea of, you know, you, you can get these mentors that are out there. And, you know, if you want to get into something, uh, if you want to get into real estate investing, then why are you not hanging around with people who are already doing real estate investing? You know, no matter what it is. And this is um, kind of right in the, in the same line with that is these people are getting out of the military. And, you know, what, what do I do when I get out of the military? Well, why don't you 
surround yourself, you know, make those five people uh, that you surround yourself with, make them people who are already there and, and they can very easily step you through it. Right. No, I think that's a brilliant advice. Uh, and, you know, when you think about the mentoring organizations that are out there, um, I couldn't find any that was 100% veteran mentors, mm-hmm. uh, people that have, have made the transition and it's open to everybody. I, I couldn't find anything like that. Uh, I would have gladly participated and not spent money and, <laughs> and done all, you know, all the all the nights working on this uh, if there was already something that was there. Um, but with that being said, all those niches where uh, you know you have a corporate America type of of um, you know somebody in the corporate world um, as a mentor, mm-hmm. um, I, I think that's that's great, but in my opinion, you do need somebody that's been through it before. So they understand, you know, why is it that you don't necessarily go over, come over very well in in an interview? Why is it that, you know, you, 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 you intimidate people at work, you know, you're five, three and, and, uh, (laughs) 130 pounds, but you intimidate people at work. it's, it's, It's that kind of thing that somebody who's already made the transition. That's a veteran they'll be able to clue right, clue right into it. It's about how you talk to people, your body language. You know, it's, a, it's about uh, how, how aggressive you come off, but it's about excitement that you have about what you're about to do. Not necessarily, you know, you're not threatening anybody. So it's, it's about understanding that. And uh, in, in, in order to, to fully understand that, you really need somebody that's, that's made the transition and is doing something similar to what you want to do. Our mentors are, are it's, it's really, um, in a short time that we've been here, um, it's overwhelming the, with the type of mentors that we have. We have CEOs of companies. We have people that own uh, medical practices. Uh, you have people who, uh, who qualify people for franchises. Uh, I mean, you, when you start looking at the people that are in the system, uh, you normally just don't have access to these type of people. Uh, you know, just imagine if you were wanting to start a tech company and you had access to the the person who's overall over overall advertising for Google. Wow! You know, to be able, and we do we have actually have uh, two mentors that are that are from Google. Wow, um, that's great. To talk to somebody that's been in there and done that, um, you know, it's just uh, it's it's priceless, quite frankly especially when they volunteer their time to talk to you. So, you know, my, my struggle here is just getting it out to where people understand that the program is there and get them to take advantage of it is, is, is actually the struggle right now. Well, but you're I'm doing, more, you're doing the right thing by being on the podcast. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I've been told. I said, like, Hey, look, deal with Jeremy's <laughs> podcast. Yeah, you're, uh, your, your stuff start booming. He, that's right. He, that's right. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> before we get into the, the final three questions, one thing that I, I always like to check in on and, and see is if you have any success stories that you can, uh, you can tell me about. Uh, definitely do. Uh, I, I mentioned actually one a little earlier with the, uh, the gentleman, uh, as far as setting up the program of documenting, uh, our conversations and documenting the process of, of, uh, of, of how we, successfully went from a, hey, hey, look, I, I want to do this, but I'm not sure how to get there to him successfully uh, getting a job. And look, I don't take any credit for that at all. Um, that's him. That's is driven by him. It's his effort that did it. I just, I, I just helped him a little bit to keep him in between the lines is, is all that, uh, that idea. He did it all himself. And uh, I think that that is one success story. Um, We've gotten several uh, emails and uh, and phone calls about. I was looking online, and my son just recently signed up. He was getting out, and he signed up. And thank God, there's something out there that people are willing to talk to uh, to him to help guide him in a direction. He's he's done his four years, and now we're really worried that he's going to get out, come live with us. <laughs> so his, <laughs> his parents were worried they were going to move. He was going to move back with them, and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and, and all joking aside, but they, you know, they, they said, Hey, you know, him having some, him connecting to somebody that, uh, that is in the field that he wants to be in and is giving him some good advice 
is is great. And the thing that the father said was that he, you know, his son wouldn't listen to him, but he would listen to somebody from the outside that is holding the position that he wants to hold someday. Yeah. That's pretty so powerful. Know, and then, uh, you know, there's, there's several other stories that are very similar and a lot of this, we're kind of relating to job, but, uh, but reality is, is that the lack of having a job connects into the family and, and the stress associated with that. Um, there's not only that part of it that's out there, but if you go to move in a location and your mentor and you look up and see that somebody's in the New York area and that's where you're moving, uh, you can connect with them, ask them about the area, ask them about, you know, and maybe they have kids, how they enroll their kids in school, what's the schools like. So, you know, the mentorship doesn't just come down to, you know, I need to find a job. Please help me find a job. It's about, you know, there's some tough decisions that have to be made. There's some things that you don't know anything about. And these people do. So it's about just taking the time to, to reach out to them and have the conversation. And keep in mind, these people have all volunteered their time to, to have those conversations. And they're excited about having them. Yeah. So it's a great fit. And we have seen, uh, as I just mentioned, we've seen several success stories. That's outstanding. I love, love hearing the success stories. And I think the listeners do, too. That's why I like to uh, sneak those in at the end. Great. And uh, Clint, if you're ready, we're going to jump into the final three questions. All right. So this is, I guess, speed round of Jeopardy? <laughs> it's pretty, pretty much the speed round, yeah. All right. uh, okay, question number one. Who would you like to hear on a future episode of the Veteran Resource Podcast? Two people would be, uh, or, or two different organizations. One would be uh, UVIS. I think uh, UVIS because they're donating the platform to us and they, they donate a lot to the other similar organizations. Mm -hmm. um, they're a good group of guys. Uh, and then the other one is uh, John Henry with Purple Star. Purple Star does a lot for uh, for veterans, and uh, John Henry's a great guy. He's been doing research around behavior, uh, around behaviors, around PTSD. Just a a great guy, and he's he's given he's given us a lot of things that uh, have been extremely helpful. Outstanding, outstanding. Okay, question number two is: What upcoming project has you fired up right now? Well. The platform that, that we have through UVIS has only been, uh, we've been up and running for about a month, month and a half now on that oh, wow. platform. And so when it came out, look, I was, I was fired. I was like, the world is, is going to change <laughs> now that, uh, that we have a platform. Because before that, I had to connect people when they called. I would just connect them to whoever I thought would be a good fit and, uh, and try to orchestrate that myself. Some worked out well, some didn't. But the platform I was just super excited about it, and I am super excited about. But we're working on some different features to make it more interactive and to uh, to allow more features on the on the platform. So uh, that's what I'm excited about right now. Excellent, excellent. And the final question: This is the brain stretcher for you. If you woke up tomorrow and you found out that somebody made an anonymous donation of ten million dollars to your organization, what would you do with it? I would struggle with that. I just don't know exactly what I, I, I wouldn't have plans for it right away. Uh, what I would do is actually work on the, I would take the mentors and the soldiers that are on the platform. Um, I would uh, send an announcement out for a call and I would do a call to the mentors and the soldiers that are part of the program right now and ask them, where should we spend the money? Mm. Uh, right now, the, uh, the, the organization is, uh, up to this point has been, uh, been funded a hundred percent by, uh, by me and my wife. And, uh, and I did that so that other organizations wouldn't think that we were trying to steal donations or anything else. Uh, and we wouldn't be a threat to any other, any other group so that we could partner easily. And, uh, so up to this point, I really haven't taken any donations. So the 10 million would be something that, uh, that I would want to open up to the group to see what would be the best ideas, uh, best way to spend the money. That's a really great idea. I mean, you, you talk to the people who are actually, uh, you know, on the front lines that, that could benefit from it, and you'd probably get some really good answers from them. So uh, for, that, for that individual with the $10 million, or for anybody else out there that wants to get in contact with you, what is the best Best method to get in contact. Well, if you got the uh, ten million, you can. Uh, I give you my home number. Uh, 
<laughs> no, I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> the our website is probably the best place. We're we're on the social media sites as well, but uh, at uh, www.mentorsforsoldiers.com. That's the number four soldiers.com. Um, really, all of our information is on there. Uh, we did recently set up a, a donation page, so if somebody does want to donate, we, we have it there. What we'll use the donations for right now is one of the things uh, I mentioned about the ten million that I would ask the the group on what we would what we want to do with it. Um, I have asked that before because uh, I, I knew that we would eventually have to go out for donations. And um, one of the answers that I got back was that people. One of the things when you get out, you don't know is uh, it's 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 kind of funny to say and think about. But most people, when they get out, don't know themselves. It's mm. is is really one of the things that that really people struggle with. It's funny. The hardest question is, what do you want to do? You know, what what career do you want to have? What um, you know, what's, what's your new mission? What's your new purpose? What's, what's those things when you're getting out and you have to know yourself to be able to, to, uh, to get there and answer those questions. So that's what we're working on right now. We're working on a new piece where we're doing, uh, some, I will say, I call them personality tests, but it's more of a, uh, of a characteristic test. Um, and, uh, and then having, uh, having some, some, some actions out the, out, out of the back of that. So, you're able to identify the characteristics of the people, um, and then on top of that, being able to tie that into the transition map and action plan. Excellent. Love that. That's really great. All right. Well, this has been an amazing conversation. I got a lot of information out of you about the organization, and uh, we will be sure to put the, the links that you mentioned in the show notes um, so that people can, can get to that and can easily find your organization and get plugged in. Hopefully we'll be sending uh, a lot of people your way, both mentors and mentees. Great, Jeremy. And I, and I will, I'll, I would like to mention too, is that if we have any organizations out there that are listening to this um, and think that we can partner in some way or, or, or help each other, it's all about helping this, helping the soldier getting that's transitioning. So anything that you think might fit, uh, look, I'm, I'm open to uh, on our side. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you so much for the interview today, Clint. Thank you, Jeremy. Appreciate it. So what do you think? Great interview, wasn't it? Are the wheels turning a little bit? If you have already transitioned out of the military, are you starting to think of different ways, different things that you know now that you could be helping other veterans with who are just now getting out, who are thinking, I don't know what I should be doing. Maybe I only have a couple of options out there. Maybe I, I have to go into the criminal justice field because there's so few jobs out there for anybody else except for in those fields for, for people coming out of the military. Maybe you have done something else and have walked a different path that you might have stumbled through and now you want to give back and you want to help some of these soldiers. Well, you can get in touch with Clint Honeycutt with Mentors for Soldiers by going to the show notes page, veteranpodcast.com slash 022. And I'm going to give you all of the links there that were mentioned so that you can get over to the website. You can get plugged in either as a mentor or as a mentee. And let's get that journey started. Thank you so much for listening. And I will see you in episode 23.